right? Um, and it's nonsense. And this is a person that tried a, a shakedown, a money shakedown that didn't work. We're going to take legal action. Um, because it's one thing to have your opinion about somebody versus just making up salacious, malicious stories. Mm -hmm. So that's actionable. So we're going to roll with that. Um, but yeah, I, you know. You say, leave it alone. <laughs> Don't go no further. Yeah. The, oh. oh, no, no. Oh, nobody oh, said anything. Oh. It's, um, you know, so for me, unfortunately, it's part of it. You know what I mean? It's not true. We going to it. And that's that. How does so there, was, there was a money shakedown prior? Oh, yeah. There was a money shakedown. Oh, they tried to extort you before? Or? Well, it's it's based around this person's idea that they, in some way, were doing business around Will's book and that they spent money or what have you and that they needed to be compensated. So he already tried to do this money shakedown. Mm -hmm. Um Will was willing to give him a certain amount or what have you, and he didn't take it. So this whole situation is based on that. Mm -hmm. Give him a certain amount. Why, though? Just Well, be, be, because of some business that they had. And I don't know the complete details about mm -hmm. it, but that's about to come out because, like I told you, about to take legal action. Mm -hmm. Right. You should. Yeah. No, we are. Mm -hmm. For sure. I was asking, how's Will dealing with it? You know, with Oh. Does he laugh it off? released a statement. His Will... Here's one good thing about what Let me start off by first addressing the video that I played in the very beginning of the video. <laughs> Jada stated that they will be taking legal action against Bilal because this is a money grab for him um, and that he tried to shake them up before. Now, it was interesting because Jada just did that interview this morning, right? Um, or yesterday morning. But this interview that Tasha K did with Bilal had been recorded, been taped. Who knows how long she's been actually sitting on the interview to get it edited, so on and so forth, right? Um, and he addressed uh, the issue of where things went wrong, right? He doesn't know about what Jada said because remember, this is re pre recorded pre-recorded so he stated um his side of the story which is allegedly he was contacted because he does product placement which is getting celebrities to wear brands to support different businesses to be seen with it and he gets paid based on how often they get seen with it purchase it blah 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 so on and so forth so he said that Will's people contacted him and said, hey, do you think you can create gift boxes for the book when the book was being published, right, um, to send out to some of your friends to showcase, you know, for promotion of the book? And he said, sure. So he creates the boxes. He purchases the things. He has, you know, the boxes when he has the meeting. Um, and he said that they pretty much treated him really bad. Um, and then he said he had a second meeting in which this meeting he actually recorded. He's like, they don't even know that I have the recording, but I have the recording. He said, I got them on tape, right? I got them on tape. He said that after he had put in all of his resources, his money, his contacts and had and contacted everyone, you know, got everything set up. They decided that we don't need you anyway. You don't have anything to do with this. We're no longer moving forward after he had already put in his resources and money, um, allegedly, for what they had originally asked him to do. Now, Jada on The Breakfast Club stated that it was a business deal that went wrong, but she made it seem as if he was being salacious that Will did offer him something and he declined the offer she didn't say why, but I'm assuming she was trying to, you know, allegedly set it up like he was being money hungry. He wasn't OK with the number. So he declined it because why else would he decline it? She said it's a money grab. So obviously she's trying to insinuate right without saying allegedly. This is my own opinion. But 
Um, so she said she's taken legal action. Now, Bilal states that he was never contacted to be compensated for the work that he had put in. He said they basically left him at the table like F you. But Jada said that Will did offer him money and he declined. So that's where the stories differ. He also stated in the interview that... Um, he tried to contact Will personally a couple of times because Will was not the one who contacted him and asked him to do these things personally. It was his people for the promotion of the book. But he, as a friend of Will, contacted him directly and he said he never got an answer. He contacted him again directly. He never got an answer. And then he said this is around the time of the Oscar slapped in which they then contacted him, letting him know, hey, let's put this off. Let's let things die down you know, because of the Oscar slap. He said that Will was in not the best state of mind at the time that it was going on. And he said as a friend, he decided to wait it out um, because he truly does care about Will. And this is why it's just coming out right now. Um, but they still have yet to try to compensate him for all of the resources and money that he put into something that he said, they, this, these are his words. They contacted me. I didn't contact them and ask them, can I do anything? They contacted me and asked me to do this for them, but then treated me like I was absolutely nothing when I came to the table. So yeah, just to address that tonight you guys my throat is killing me because i was screaming at the screen like what what jaw dropping no that happened no way that really was the emotional roller coaster that i was on watching this tasha k interview i must say that it was um really really good it was really long but every minute was from from beginning to end was juicy. It was very packed, um, very detailed. I actually did a video earlier where I felt as if um, there was no truth to what Brother Bilal was saying. And I felt that way just because I felt like the way he was describing, and, and you guys can go check my other video out, but I felt like he was describing in detail um, something that he saw, you know, without, if you're walking in on someone and you are interrupting them in an intimate moment, most of the time that person will try to cover themselves up, jump, become startled. And so when he was saying, oh, you know, he was murdering it, it was a murder scene. I was thinking like, He's lying. There's no way. But I also did say, unless it was edited to appear that that's how he said it, then I don't believe it. So after I watched the full interview, it was edited that way. Um, they did become startled <laughs> and they did stop. Um, and there was a conversation that, that was had about what brother Bilal saw. Now, let me start from the beginning. Okay. Now I want to say this, the interview surprisingly was not really about bashing Will at all. I think Tasha K did a great job um, with the editing because it, it seemed as if this was juicy, juicy details about Will. And, and though there were moments and trinklets um, along the way, this interview was really about Jada. It was about Jada, her history, her character, and how she treats Will, and what has happened over the years to bring them to the point that we see where it seems as if it's all falling apart, even though they pretty much try to claim that they're holding everything together. Now, Brother Bilal said he's writing a book, and the book is going to be titled Will Smith and Jada Pickett Smith, Demonic Circle. Now, he states he was supposed to release this book um, back in, I believe, December. But he said he was supposed to release the book in December, not back in December, because we haven't reached December yet. Sorry, my mind's all over the place. It's late. I'm kind of tired. 
but he said he was supposed to release the book in December. And when the Smiths heard about him going to release his book, he says they put a rush to release Jada's book, Worthy, that was not actually supposed to be released until 2024. Now, he said that um, they did this to try to expose some things that he might already, they think that he might be exposing, right? Um, And I thought that was very telling because it's clear that he knows them. It's clear that He's somebody from the inside. And he mentioned this a lot during the interview about everything else that we've ever heard about the Smith family has always been speculation. It has always been, I heard, they say, we think, in my opinion, but it has never been concrete evidence on this is what it is. I saw with my own eyes, so on and so forth. So he gives lots of proof in this interview that he knows Will and has been knowing Will before Will even knew Jada or even his first wife, right? I mean, we're talking, he said he met Will back at 18, 19 years of age. So this is like 30 something year plus relationship. Now, he says, that one thing that was interesting and I didn't I'm not going to tell you guys everything but I'm just going to tell you a few which is kind of detailed a few points there is a lot of points that I took away that I want to share with you guys one of them was about um people's perception of will of will being weak of will being scared um and just being soft and feminine now he said that will got them hands Those are his exact words. Will got them hands. He said, Will will hurt you. He will hurt somebody. He said that Will may appear soft and feminine, but he's not at all. That, you know, he grew up in the streets. He knows how to fight. He trained for a year to do the Ali movie. So his hands are registered. And you don't want to mess with him, basically. Now, I thought that was interesting because all we know of Will is that he just takes it, takes it, takes it and doesn't ever say anything about it, you know, but he's really bringing us into the man of like, you know, Will don't play that, but it appears that because of how he wants his image to be betrayed, but it's not because he's scared of you. It's not because he feels like he's going to get beat up, you know, it's just because of his image that he's trying to um, protect. So I said, oh, OK, because in, in, in Will's book, if you read his book, um, he talks a lot about being a coward and not defending people's honor. So I could see that. I could see how from that trauma, he's not going to let those things happen again, um, especially when he was old enough to defend himself, because he said he saw his father consistently beat up on his mom. As a kid, he was defenseless. He couldn't do anything. I mean, this is a kid. And he's a grown man, but he always wanted to protect his mom and he felt like a coward because he couldn't do so, which is, again, it's crazy because he's a kid. You know, why would he be feeling guilty for not being able to protect his mom from a grown ass man? You know, it's unfortunate, but that was good to hear. Another thing that I thought was interesting in the interview was he mentioned the um, dealers of Baltimore Now, Jada came out and she wrote in her book that she used to be a dealer back in Baltimore in her younger days. And basically, he was um, dispelling this and saying that she's fabricating the story, that she never really did this. What it was, was, and he was very frank. He said her mother was an addict and would leave Jada, who was very young, beautiful, at home, no lights, no food, no electricity, um, no gas, nothing. And so he said that Jada has always been um, in survival mode when it comes to having to eat, having to get food. Um, I'm sorry, I said that right. Redundant. Uh, But having to eat, having to clothe herself, wanting to look fly, you know, get her hair done, just 
the basic necessities that a kid would want. She had to learn how to go out there and get it herself. And she's very beautiful. And so he said that she used what she had basically to get what she want, to get what she need. And he said that, you know, she would hang out with the dealers of Baltimore, but she was no dealer and she was ran through. <laughs> that that's what they that's what he said. Allegedly. She was ran through. Um, he said, imagine you're the prettiest girl in Baltimore. You do when in pageants, you're doing this, you're doing that. Um, and you're pretty popular in your town, right? Everybody's everybody knows about you, everybody hears about you. They want you around. He said, but they wanted you around so that they could use you. So yeah, they gave you a little something here and there, you know, but they used you for it, you know, and um he said that from a young age, that's the mentality that Jada um, had to have. And that's what she picked up in order to survive. And it stuck with her throughout her whole life. This is what he's accusing her of, right? He said, so if someone is in survival mode and having to you know, do what she has to do to survive, to eat, to clothe, because her mother is allegedly an addict and has left her alone many of times, that doesn't stop once you get to Hollywood. He said what she did was she took that same street mentality and brought it to Hollywood and ran through Hollywood and lucked up on Will um, being a nice guy that he is. And he wanted to be with somebody who was beautiful like her. She was up and coming. She was getting roles. Um, and everybody thought she was a new hot thing in town. And he said that Sheree or Sherelle, I, I I don't know her name. I, I don't want to say it wrong, but his first wife, Trey's mother, his son, Trey, uh, mother and his first wife that he was married to for, I believe it was three years. He said, yeah, she was beautiful. He said, but she wasn't Jada because she wasn't, she wasn't in no movies. She wasn't highly sought after every celebrity guy didn't want to be with her. He said that in one regard, Jada wanted to be in that status. You know, Will was already really big and she was doing what she had to do for survival and Will was her come up. But he also said that Will wanted Jada for his own image to feel like he could get the girl. He could get the it girl. He could get the one, the woman that everyone wanted and she would want to be with him. So he's he's kind of saying that it was like an equal understanding type of thing, you know. Um but she claims that another thing that he claimed is that Miss Jada is an addict apparently. And he states that she actually wanted him to get her some prescription pills in his name which he declined and so Tasha says well what was she on what was she taking he said you know she addicted to them perk 30s I started dying laughing because it made me think of the song right what what is it like perk 30 perk 30 I don't know something like that but I started thinking about that um that song but you know opioid addiction is 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 huge right now and so I won't put too much on that. Again, this is all alleged. I'm just, you know, reiterating what I saw, what I took from the interview that I watched with Tasha K. Um, but he did say that about Miss Jada. Now, he claims that Jada is holding things over Will's head, which is why Will has continued to be complacent. And that's why Will hasn't left or spoken up on his own behalf. Now, what was interesting about this is people have been speculating this. People are saying, and normally they're saying it out of jokes, you know, trying to be funny. They'll say, she must got something on him because hell no. <laughs> but Brother Bilal is, is saying that she does and she has many things. And some of the things he did not mention, he said, there's lots of things, um, but you have to get the book to know about all the things. But, um, that was one thing that was interesting because that's come up a lot. Why is he allowing her to publicly embarrass him like this and be so outward about what's going on in their private life? Um, and he gave us an, an, an insight on why that might be. Now, he said when he met Will, Will was a straight man, 
right? He said he ran through lots of beautiful women in Baltimore. He said, I'm, I'm sorry, in Philadelphia. He said that Will was popping out in um in Philadelphia. So he said he ran through a slew of beautiful women and he never had an inkling of Will being a homosexual. But once Will entered into Hollywood is when he saw things that he had never saw in Will. For example, like his mannerisms and the way he interacted with other men. One man that he specifically mentioned was Benny Medina. Now, Benny Medina is like a talent scout, talent agent. And he his the show The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was actually based on Benny Medina's real life. Um, and he was the one who casted Will. Now, um, Brother Bilal said that he was in a hallway. Um, I forgot exactly where they were, but that uh, Benny Medina walked by and said, hey, Will, I'm going to come and talk to you in a minute. And that they kissed on the lips. He said it was not like a, 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 a embracing, you know, like long winded, you know, romantic kiss. He said, but he kissed that man. Those were his words. He kissed that man. And he said he was confused because. He just assumed maybe that's the way things go in Hollywood, but he believes that they started grooming him from that point on. Now, he says that he hired a private investigator to corroborate claims that have been made against Will and Jada over the years, right? Um, and some of the things that he was able to definitively, uh, definitively um, confirm definitively, I'm sorry, confirm was that Will bought Dwayne Martin a home that he and Tisha stayed in, that Dwayne and Tisha stayed in, and she had no idea um, that Will Smith owned the home that she lived in. He also said that Will Smith purchased Dwayne Martin a Bentley a very early on um, in their relationship. He said that they are lovers. Um, he said Dwayne is very well taken care of. He's rich because he is basically has access to everything that Will has as his lover. He also stated that um, there was a club that Dwayne Martin said that he owned. I believe it was called the Zen Lounge or something like that. Come to find out it was purchased by Will and Will gifted that that club or lounge to Dwayne Martin. Now, he believes that Hollywood groomed Will um, to open him up to being with man and to being open to um, um, grooming and, and, and being in homosexual interactions, right? And he mentions the movie, The Six Degrees of Separation. Now, I've never actually seen that movie, but I've heard about uh, the same-sex sex scene that they had um, in the movie. And um, he says that the preparation for the film was uncanny. He said that they would make Will um, watch gay porn for hours um, at a time. And this is months of preparation. He would have to visit gay sex shows in Europe. Um, and he's preparing for this role again over months of time. And he said that Will is the type of guy that when he puts his mind to something... He's really zoned in and wanting to do the best that he can. He needed to know how to look at a man, how to be feminine, how to kiss a man, how to seduce a man. And he said that's when he believes that's when um, Will Smith um, got his addiction to the penal. <laughs> that's what he said. Now, I have to just say this side note, right? Tasha K is so annoying. She is a horrible interviewer. I appreciate that I was able to see the interview. And I mean, I think she did okay. But if Brother Bilal had not been organized in his thoughts and came there with the purpose to say what he wanted to say and, and, and have it all together, that interview would have been all over the place. Because there were a few times where Tasha cut him off. There were a few times when she went off topic and start going on a tangent about her own things. When he would answer one question, she would try to jump in and ask another question. He would have to redirect her back to what he was answering previously. And sometimes people aren't always able to do that. Sometimes people get sidetracked. You ask them something new, they move on to that, forget what they were saying. But you can tell that he really came there with a purpose. She also, he was, he was ready to talk, y'all. He was ready to talk and I was ready to listen 
can you believe that she said, oh, yeah, you know, because we've been here for a while and, you know, I, I don't like three hour interviews, but, but we can always bring you back. What do you mean? Girl, if I have to sit there for five hours to get this tea, this tea is piping hot, honey. What do you mean? You don't want to sit here for three hours. I couldn't believe that she said that. And she was serious about it. And they really rapped and didn't do a three hour interview. But you could tell that he had so much more to say. And he said in the interview that this was like a release for him because he's been holding all of this information in for years. And finally, he gets to tell his side and tell what he's been holding and, and hiding. Right now. He goes on to say that. He is Will Smith's assistant. He was doing everything for Will. He said, this wasn't just, you know, go get me some mustard for my hot dog. He was the point of contact. If people wanted to reach Will, he would be there before Will would come to set and and, and stay after set and do everything that he needs to do uh, for Will. And he said it was very taxing. He said he went and um, kind of was doing his own thing for a little while and he got a call. And he said that somebody from Will's camp told him that they needed him to go and hold Dwayne Martin down on the set of All of Us. Now, All of Us is a show that is produced by Jada and Will based on their life, right? Um, And it is starring Dwayne Martin. And he said that Will said that we want you to go hold Dwayne Martin down like you hold me down and he said that he wasn't interested he like why do I need to be on this little bitty ass um a sitcom show at WB he said I told them you know he said I humbly declined basically and he said that they called him back very quickly and said Will said he's not asking so he said he went on ahead and went up there um to help Dwayne Now, he said he later found out that the reason that Will wanted him to go to help Dwayne was not necessarily because he needed an assistant, but was because he wanted him to spy on Dwayne, watch his every move, because at the time, Dwayne was having an affair with Lisa Ray's husband, allegedly, you guys. That was crazy. Now, Lisa Ray has come out several times. She is, she can't stand Dwayne Martin till this day. She has an issue with him. She stated in several interviews, and I used to wonder why is she saying it like that? She would say, um, Dwayne Martin stole my husband. You know, usually if you're talking about something like that, it's because a woman has stole your husband, not another man, right? The verbiage was, was questionable. is that Dwayne Martin used to allegedly physically abuse Tisha Campbell. He said black eyes and busted lips and things of that nature. And that Dwayne Martin was actually jealous of the relationship that Tisha Campbell was having with Martin on the show because they had been a thing at one point. And he didn't like it. And he was the one who convinced Tisha to create the allegations on Martin that he was sexually harassing her. Um, If you guys remember, that was the reason that she didn't really film the last season. And ultimately, the show went downhill after those allegations were made. But Bilal is claiming that the, all those allegations were BS and that it was all Dwayne Martin who forced Tisha to do that because of his own jealousy and insecurity. How a shame is that? Because, you know, we're always supposed to believe women, believe women. And Martin has stated that that wasn't the situation. But there have been several people who came forth, like Tashina Arnold, right, who stated that she saw things. So it's interesting to hear Bilal say that those things never happened. And it was Dwayne Martin who was pushing this um, to Tisha to create this narrative. But, you know, present tense, her and Martin are 
good friends and they've, you know, got reacquainted as far as on a business level, right? Nothing more than that, but just on a business level. And she seems to be very remorseful of what she did in that time, never admitting that she made it up, but you could tell she's very remorseful and happy about being able to have a relationship with Martin again. And it's all, and it's crazy too, because she was at the height of her career, but she never really worked too much after that. So I know in hindsight, looking back on it, she probably thinks, dang, I made a horrible decision. Now look at you, you're broke. Your husband done left you for Will, allegedly, you know, and then you've also tarnished someone else's reputation of saying that they were, you know, sexually harassing you. And it's just crazy because, like I said, in hindsight, we think about the things that we do after they've already been done. And once they're done, it's kind of hard to make them right or take them away because the damage has already been done. So it's it's sad. Really always was wondering that. I'm like, why is she saying that he stole her husband? She said that they had a better relationship them two, Dwayne and her husband, than she had with her husband. And he completely came in between um their relationship, would also bring him women, go on vacations together, um, just doing, you know, things that weren't right, but she never said that they had an affair or that her husband was uh, sleeping with Dwayne. She never said that. So I'm wondering, she was giving us as much as she could. She still got to work in Hollywood, right? So she had to give us as much as she could, but we always kind of figured, hmm, what does she mean by that? He stole my husband. That's the best way she could tell us. And that's crazy. Now, let me tell you, what else he said now when it came to him the murder you know he was getting murdered or whatever in the in the um in the dressing room he said this happened on the set of all of us he said one day will was there to shoot a scene uh, but also to be a producer on the show and so you know they they went for a break and he said that the director came and said hey we need will for this to look at this shot and give an okay for it so he wanted they wanted him to go find will so he said he's looking all over can't find will but he sees his car and he said that um he had Dwayne Martin's dressing room keys because remember at the time he is also assisting Dwayne Martin as well he said he goes in they he says apparently I guess they didn't hear him because he said when he said oh shit is when they turned around and said get the f out close the door now he states that after um he saw that he left and locked the locked their dressing room back and he kind of was like contemplating should I leave should I stay what should I do so he said I'm just gonna stay I'm just gonna act like I didn't see nothing so I didn't see anything I didn't see anything so he said that Will came up to him and said you know we got to talk and he said I don't know what you're talking about what you want to talk about I don't know you know I don't know nothing they said my name been and I ain't in it and he said no Will said no like we need to talk now he said you know what we need to talk about and he said that Will basically in so many words kind of threatened him but in a nice way he said that will told him hey i'm gonna have somebody come up here shortly and i'm gonna need you to sign these papers we're assuming that those papers were ndas right which is a legal document saying that you can't talk about what you have seen or are seeing or whatever um very popular within the celebrity world so that their secrets don't get out right by people trying to benefit off of um their dirt their secrets now, he said that he told him, you know what happened to that trans that was caught in the car with Eddie Murphy, right? Now, he said he'd never um, heard of it, but uh, he said when he got home and he looked it up, he said he saw, wow. So the trans that was caught in the car with Eddie Murphy actually came up deceased one year almost after she was caught in the whole, in the uh, car with Eddie Murphy. Now, the story is kind of strange because the story states that she was locked out of her home and she was trying to get back in. So she got some rope <laughs> and tried to swing into the apartment, which was on the fifth floor. 
and fell to her death. I don't believe it. And, and in the in, in, in the interview, he was saying, I've never heard of that. He said, have you ever heard of that? He said, so that was letting me know that he was trying to let me know, like, <laughs> you know what happened to people who run their mouth, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what happened to people who run their mouth, right? He said that he also told him that the powers that be are protecting him. The powers that be are protecting him. And he said he told him, I don't want that to happen to you. What you trying to say? That has got to be super scary because he knows how powerful these people are. So he said he never went back. <laughs> he said he never signed the papers and he never went back. He was not messing around. Now, he says that a few months after that, you know, uh, Jada reached out to him, he said, which was strange because he said he don't mess with Jada. He called Jada a lot of names during the interview. Um, you know, he talked about her addiction. He talked about her being ran through. He talked about her just being an evil uh, person, called her out her names a few times. That's why I said, again, this interview didn't really seem like it was about Will. It really was about Jada, right? Now... He said that Will is in a battered syndrome type situation, right? He said that Will is in a battered type situation because um, Will is in a predicament where he can't leave or he, he won't leave because Jada is holding things over his head and because Will wants to keep his secrets in house and does not want them exposed to tarnish his reputation, he just decides to sit there and take it. And he said that Jada knows that and she takes advantage of that. And that is why we see him not doing anything, not making a move. And it seems crazy to us. It seems like, what is he doing? Why is he staying? He doesn't have to do this. He is the Will Smith. But he says that Will is more concerned about his reputation than his own happiness. He's more concerned about what the people will say than setting himself free. One of the things that he said that Jada is holding over Will, he said that Jada was on a show called The Hearthorn or Hearthorn. She had a show and um, on the show, Mark Anthony, which was JLo's ex-husband, uh, was also on the show and they were having an affair that was known. And he said this wasn't just like, oh, you know, she giving him some clap clap. It was more like this, my man. While he was married to JLo, this my man. He said that one day Will walked in and saw Jada and Mark Anthony having blank blank on the couch in their home and he went ballistic. He went crazy, said that he beat Jada up so bad, allegedly, that they had to make a makeshift hospital in their home because he didn't want her to go to the hospital and let the tabloids get a hold of what really happened. And these are one of the things that he said Jada is holding over over Will's head. Will does not want to be known as a woman beater. He said he beat her so bad that she had to have cosmetic surgery. He said, so if you ever look at her face and you see her cheeks and they 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 look a little, he said, yeah, that's because of that. I said, ooh, we've been wondering why she was looking like that. She was looking different, but I'm assuming that it was just she wants to look younger. So that's crazy. And also, I want to know, like, if he he says that he has proof. OK, hardcore receipts. In my last video that I put out, I said, we don't want to hear anything about Will unless you got receipts, you know, because. We've been hearing these allegations for so long. Nobody has concrete proof. He states that he has concrete proof. It hasn't come out yet, but he said that it will in his book that he has coming out, right? Now, he says that Dwayne Martin is Will Smith's lover and that Tisha Campbell was aware of it. Now, this is the last couple of things that I'm going to go ahead and check out. He stated that if you want to work for the Smith family, they 
move very differently than, you know, you interview, you did great, you come work for us. No, he said, if you work for them, they make you do things to cover themselves up in case you decide to open your mouth and run your mouth. He says, for example, they make you go to rehab, whether you have an addiction or not. You're going to go if you want to work for them. They're going to pay for it. And then when you get out, they're going to tell you, hey, there's cameras in our home. I want you to go over to my wallet, pull out the $200 that's in my wallet. It's some money in there. Hey, take my credit card. Go shop, go high end, do whatever you want, spend it. And then Jada will go ahead and report her, her card lost, but won't file any criminal charges. And then if if any of those people that work for them try to come forward, he said they will use those things against them. And he said it's not just that. He said there's also sex acts that they will get on video and they will hold that over your head if you try to go spilling their secrets. Mm. I want to say this. I really want you guys to go and look at my other video that I did. But I I just want to say this before I end. If all of these things are true, it's a sad situation because if you're as big as Will is, you do want to protect your image. However, you also don't want to live your life being miserable, right? You want to enjoy the fruits of your own labor. So I wonder with him coming out and if the book ends up, you know, being published and we get to actually have our hands on it and read it and people pick up on this, is this going to change the dynamic of their relationship? Will Will finally say, you know what, it's already out there now, I'm done. Or will they still continue to deny it to the very, very end? One thing that uh, Brother Bilal did say was that They could stop this right now. They could come out and they can admit and they can own it and move on. He said that I won't have anything to tell. I wouldn't have no story because they are already admitting to the things that I'm going to put in the book. He said, but they would never do that. They're going to deny, 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 Um, which is which is really unfortunate. I think everybody knew that Jada was the problem, maybe more so recently than early on. But it's just sad. I think all around, it's really sad that a man cannot live in his truth um, with fear of being ridiculed and losing his legacy. But it's also sad to be in something that you're not happy with. Right. So I think you guys should. I think the interview was worth paying for. I paid twelve ninety nine for it. Um, I think it was worth uh, paying for. It. it was a really, really good interview. Guys, go check the interview out. All right. She said, don't post anything. So I couldn't get any clips for you, but she said she will be posting it on YouTube. If you guys want to check it out, make sure you go to Tasha K live dot com. Um, 1299 is not anything compared to the juicy tea. If you're a blogger or a vlogger that you're going to get in that interview. All right, y'all. I'm tired. (laughs) Good night.